What the fuck is up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Lost in the Dark Podcast. <clears throat> I am Burton, and I'm rolling solo tonight. Um, uh, uh, my One of my cohorts, Preston, is uh, down in Florida tonight, actually. He's down in uh, Cocoa Beach. Shout out to him. It was his birthday yesterday, so huge fucking shout out to my brother, my co-host, the one that started all of this madness with me. Mr. Preston Bargerstock celebrating his 29th year on this earth. May Odin bid you well, my brother. Drink to him. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's get this thing started. Um, Quite a, quite a big day in uh, Metal News today, actually. Uh... We've had some announcements. Uh, okay, so we've been talking about the new uh, the Slipknot for quite a while. The the new tour uh, and the new album coming. Now, we knew for, for a little while now, if you've been paying attention, we've actually known the venues that, that Slipknot will be performing at. We also know the band's uh, opening for them. Uh, it's, uh, what do we got? Gojira, Behemoth, and Volbeat. Um, Volbeat really makes no sense whatsoever. But, honestly, honestly, it kind of does a little bit now, okay? It kind, it makes a little bit more sense now, okay? So here's what got announced today. Is, uh, the, the, the dates, the actual dates of the tour. So we, like I said, going into this, we knew the opening bands and the venues. We didn't know the dates, we also didn't know when the new album would be coming out. Those are the things that got announced today. So, uh, you know, it's it's a July 26th through September 8th tour. Uh, you know, California, Utah, New Mexico, Arizona, Virginia, Indiana, um, New York, Surrey, it looks like, New Jersey, Virginia, Florida, Texas, lots and lots they're they're going everywhere um hopefully they're coming to a place near you uh for all of my listeners in here hometown in michigan they're coming to pine knob dt energy music theater clarkson michigan monday august 12th uh is when this tour the reason why volbeat makes more sense now though is because of how they're billing this tour this isn't like um, but you know, the new single is all out life. This isn't the, and then there's rumors even that that's what the album is going to be called. This isn't the all out life tour. You know what I mean? This is, this is the not fest road show. So this, this is them, you know, essentially take, trying to take not fest on the road. Um, which is why Volbeat makes a little bit more sense. If you're billing it as, this isn't a Slipknot tour necessarily. This is a, a not fest tour. It makes more sense to have that kind of diversity in the lineup. Um, and then, like I said, too, the album, we don't know what it's called yet, but the new album has been confirmed for Friday, August 9th. So pretty much right, you know, just, just a couple of weeks after they start this tour, in the middle of the tour... The album drops. It comes out August 9th. So when they come... So the day after the album comes out, they play the Iowa State Fairgrounds. Brilliant. And then uh, they play Tinley Park in Illinois the next day. And then the following day, so 9, 10, 11, 12. So three days after the album comes out, they play Detroit. So that'll be that'll be cool. So I'm sure there will be some... You know, maybe, maybe there will be some sort of uh, a... Uh, a, uh, a set list change or something like that. Um, yeah, so that's that's pretty awesome. Um, tickets go on sale Friday. Uh, uh, and you know what? Fuck it. Hey, guess what, everyone? I'm going to give you a little, little something. Anyone, anyone out there who's listening to this right now, you're about to get a little treat. And I don't know if I can get in trouble for this or not, but I don't give a fuck. Uh, uh, the Live Nation presale code. If you want to get your tickets for wherever you are, if you want to go to the show, you're looking at the date, you're looking at the place near you, and it works out, and you want to get tickets to the show, the Live Nation presale code, so you can get your tickets on Thursday, is all caps MASH UP, M-A-S-H-U-P. I don't know if I can get in trouble for this. I have no idea, because I'm pretty sure, like, only if you're, like, subscribed to Live I don't, 
And I've never subscribed to Live Nation. I've just bought tickets from them. So I'm sure everybody has this. But just in case you don't, mashup is the pre-sale code to get your tickets on Thursday for that. Um, so that's pretty cool. August 9th, the... Uh, <clears throat> August 9th, the uh, album. August 12th, their stop in Detroit, or Clarkston, uh, Michigan. Uh, cl- as close to Detroit as they're going to get. Now, what I'm hoping, honestly, so they're doing this Not Fest st- Roadshow summer thing, and what I'm hoping is that this ends up essentially being leg one of the album tour, and then they end up actually coming back um, you know, maybe maybe February the following year or something like that to an indoor venue. Slipknot's one of those bands that I I've never seen on an open floor, and I I would really really like to just like I would you know on the same level that I'd love to see Iron Maiden again on the open floor, which I haven't in twelve thirteen years now. So uh, so yeah, you know it's one of those things, but you know. Uh, Anybody in Michigan knows a fucking day of DTU with great music. Day of Pine Knob is going to be fucking. It's going to be a great fucking time, especially with metal in the air. That's all I'm going to say. So I'm looking forward to that. I We will see you there. Aaron and I will be there in force. Uh, it's going to be a great time. Uh, very excited about that for sure. Next announcement that uh caught my attention today well here's a, here's a good one here's a shout out here's a shout out to my brother aaron who is a uh you know who was a little bit upset to say the least that the uh the grammys did not include vinnie paul in their in memoriam video this year well here's this one's for you buddy um Hell yeah, this is from MetalInjection.com. Hell yeah have announced their first show since the tragic passing of drummer Vinnie Paul last June. Paul died of a heart attack. Hell yeah, a celebration of the life of Vinnie Paul will be held at the House of Blues in Las Vegas, Nevada on Saturday, May 11th. Special guests are expected to be joining the band to celebrate the greatest, one of the greatest drummers in metal history. So if you're out in Las Vegas, um, let me tell you something right now. The metal community... We are a community. If you listen to this podcast, you're probably a metalhead, I hope. And uh, you know what the community is like. Uh, you know what uh, what it was like when the lead singer of Guar passed. Um, when Randy Blythe was in jail in Prague. Uh, you know, all these... Every time something's going on, the you know, the legions appear to help enforce so especially in something like this at a bit when 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 the lead singer mitch of suicide silence passed away live life hard motherfucker um uh that 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 uh uh memorial show that they ended up putting on dvd and uh and on the cd which i actually just purchased unbelievable absolutely fantastic so uh you you bet your ass special guests will be at this show for Vinny fucking Paul. You bet your fucking ass. Some legends are about to show up. So, uh, yeah, definitely if you're in the Las Vegas, you know, what did I say? Is Las Ve- The House of Blues in Las Vegas, Nevada, May 11th, 2019. Uh, one night only. If you're out there, trust me, you're going to want to, if you're a metalhead, go to this hell yeah show because you don't know who's going to show up. Trust me on that. And I don't fucking know either. I'm just saying, if I were out there, this ticket would be purchased before I even recorded this shit. <clears throat> Roman Verners. Not a lot of you out there might know what Verners is. That's what I'm enjoying tonight. Verners is a Michigan classic. Uh, it's ginger ale. And it's the best damn ginger ale on the fucking planet. Uh... If if you've never had Verner's and you like ginger ale, you need to, and you're not from Michigan, you need to order some online immediately. The downside is they still use high fructose corn syrup. Not necessary. Not necessary. I'm not into that shit. The next big announcement today that I was excited about personally, um, another tour, a summer tour. Now, see, I have until Thursday when I get the Slipknot ticket, I don't have any tickets for anything after Slayer, which is like May 
like 19th Fish, Detroit, DTE, Pine Knob. So I don't have any tickets for anything after May at the moment. Until Thursday when I get both Slayer. Or not, <laughs> when I get both Slipknot. For August, and then I get my first ticket for July. Also at Pine Knob DT, July twentieth. Um, check this out. Cool fucking tour. Motionless and White. I don't really know them. Couldn't tell you what they sound like, so I don't know. Um, Motionless and White opening for Hailstorm. Lizzie Hale. I'm a huge fan. Uh, their cover, their recent cover of Still of the Night by White Snake blew me away. Lizzie Hale, Hailstorm, fucking absolutely fantastic. Opening for the God of Shock himself, Old Uncle Alice, Mr. Alice Cooper, ladies and gentlemen, Hell Dining, the show. So, uh, and if you've never seen Hel- Alice Cooper and you're a metalhead, what the fuck are you doing? Like, I know he's not like metal, but he is the godfather of shock rock and uh, shock rock and metal. They're very closely related, so uh, they draw a lot of influence from one another. That's for goddamn sure. That's going to be a great show. That's going to be a fucking great show. Uh, Again, it'll be at Pine Knob GTE July 20th. Uh, Very excited about that one. Tickets go on sale again Friday, and guess what? They go on sale Friday, March 8th. Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? But for all my listeners, (laughs) because I'm a fucking Live Nation person that gets sent to emails also mashup are you serious it's the same password so also thursday mashup for both Sli- uh slipknot and alice cooper and hailstorm check those shows out if they are uh if they're coming to-, to a town near you that's for sure i can guarantee they're both going to be fantastic fucking shows now no, 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 no. Let us get to the... Uh, oh, 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 wait. What do we got here? One more thing. One more news article I saw that I wanted to talk about. Now, I don't know entirely what to make of this. Okay, so... Let's wind the clock back. Now, I just saw on Netflix, they came out with the uh, The 2000s documentary. The title of the documentary is The 2000s. CNN documentary. They've been doing the decades documentaries. Um, They've done 2000 to 2010, and I watched the music one and the TV one. And when they were talking, the the music one, now this is an especially... uh, This is an especially fascinating time because this is when digital music began to take hold and uh, in an industry that never thought it would end with the CDs and with the CDs they were making more money than it's ever made since they ever in history. No point in history was better for the music industry than the late 80s to the early 2000s when CDs were popular. Uh, they made more money off of CDs than anything else ever. And then Napster, iTunes, streaming, all these things, digital music uh, came into existence. The idea that all this art and music could be put into ones and zeros and shared digitally um, with essentially no consequence. Uh, it was a really fascinating, uh, you know, it, it really was a fascinating time in history. I'm someone who never really got swept up in it. Um, and that's solely just me, uh, because I remember, I always remembered as a kid, um, uh, I, uh, I saw my uncle's CD collection once. And, well, probably more than once, but I saw my uncle's CD collection, and it was big. And I always remembered wanting to have a CD collection like that. And, you know, I grew up with a Walkman CD player, going to school on the bus every day, listening to the headphones. Uh, You know, I grew up with CDs. So, um, you know, being a 29-year-old now, 
it's I, I that's how I still prefer to consume my music is I, I like to buy the CD and then I'll put it on my iTunes to put it on my phone to Bluetooth it in my car so I don't wear out the CD because there's been many, many CDs that I've completely worn out just from having in the CD binder in the car and playing them so much. And let's be honest, they don't even fucking barely make CD binders anymore. Yeah, I could find one on Amazon, but come on. Uh, so I like to preserve the CDs and then uh, I'm looking for, I'd like to find a really nice um like maybe skeletonized CD player so you can see through it. So it's almost like a record player in some sense to to put out so I can play the CDs at, you know, at home through that. Um, but yeah, that's, you know, it's just what I've always done. I just always liked CDs. I always loved the booklets. I always loved the, the art, the artists. Um, uh, and especially, you know, heavy metal uh, especially when you get into the extreme forms of heavy metal, the the death metal, the death core, the black metal, everything. Uh, uh, being able to sit down and actually read the lyrics from the booklet while you're reading the song, or listening to the song, will literally change your perspective on the song. And it's, you know, it's just a really great experience. I love doing that. So, uh, you know, it's just the way I've always fucking and, and consumed. I've always, That's the way I prefer to consume my music. Um, so, you know, the, the, two, the first decade of the 2000s was this crazy time. Now, on the one hand, you have Lars... In Metallica, suing, you know, doing a, doing pulling a Jay and Silent Bob and going after all the people on poopshoot.com and fucking uh, trying to fuck with everyone that ever talked shit about them. And Lars is trying to sue everyone that ever illegally downloaded a Metallica song. On the one hand. On the other hand, you have band, and I don't remember what band it was because, it, to be honest, I'm not a fan. Uh... But there was some other band that is huge. Really, I mean, at least they were really popular back then. Um, Because I knew who the fuck they were. They were played on the radio all the time. Can't remember their name, though. Uh, Maybe like Dashboard Confessional. Something like that, you know what I mean? One of those bands. Uh, that, that, That their record label was essentially holding them back. And uh, because of Napster, they were they had a new platform to get their music out, and essentially got big from that. Uh, so, right there in the beginning, you see the excuse me, you see the fucking dichotomy of this, uh, and it, it it's still kind of going both ways, and and like the big. The, the, the record companies always fucked over the bands. You know what I mean? So it's not necessarily a bad thing that they were being put out of business, but it was definitely also hurting, I think, the bands. Because for, you know, for, for the first decade, I mean, you know, pretty much everyone else I knew... um didn't give a shit about having the physical copy. They all they wanted was singles. All of a sudden, and you know, for a long time, it that was, you know, people say that the record companies forced us to buy the album for the single. Well, they also didn't have many other avenues. I mean, I guess they could have released the single on CD, which a lot of times they did. Um. Yeah, I don't know. So. Uh, it was just a really interesting watch, and I and I don't know. I don't think the cards have fallen enough yet to say, in the end, if it was all good or bad. Uh, I think it. I think it. Maybe it never will. Maybe it'll always be looked at as both. But you know, I just I ultimately feel like in the end of all of it, it's always the fucking musicians that are getting fucked. Um, which leads me to this, uh, another story from Metal Injection from this week. Major labels earned about 
19 million dollars. Hold on. 19 million dollars. Wait for it. Per day. 19 million dollars per day from streaming in 2018. Depending on who you talk to, streaming is either the future or complete and total or a complete and total ripoff. Regardless of your opinion on the matter, the fact is that at least three major labels made out pretty fucking well in 2018, according to Music Business Worldwide. Labels UMG, Parent Vivendi, Sony Music, Parent Sony Corp, and Warner Music Group quite literally made about $19 million per day in streaming venue. This breaks down to about $800,000 per fucking hour. Overall, the trio of major labels made $6.93 billion in 2018, which is up from their revenue of $5.3 billion in 2017. Of that matter, Universal was responsible for $3 billion. This is also equates to about 39% jump in overall revenue between 2017 and 18 for the label. Warner broke came, or Warner came in with 1.83 billion in streaming and Sony did about 2 billion. Uh, music Business Worldwide further reports that between streaming and music sales overall, the trio of labels raked in 13.14 billion dollars last year. It's worth noting that Universal's the Universal has streaming rights to the Beatles, Drake, and Post Malone. So it's not a so it's not exactly surprising that their streaming income is through the fucking roof. Now I uh inserted all those swear words just for the record. Jesus Christ. Okay. So something to focus on in this article. They have the streaming rights. So that is a new few pages that has been added to contracts in the last 10 years. That's for goddamn sure. Streaming rights. So how does that work for a smaller bit? You know... I just, it's one of those things, man. It's one of those things that I, I, it's too, it's too big for me to understand without some, an expert explaining it to me. I'm too fucking dumb to understand this shit on my own. It, it really just seems like streaming rights? Why? Wouldn't the bands want to keep those? Or what do they get paid to, you know, like, Jesus Christ. So, let's see, Universal has those ones. How much? Accordingly, we miss only one. Universal responsible for three billion. Okay. So three billion of the thirteen point fourteen, and they have the Beatles, Drake, and Post Malone. How much of that three billion is straight from the Beatles, Drake, and Post Malone? Because I'll give it to them. Those are the three of the biggest names out there right now. Man, and how much would the Beatles, Drake, and Post Malone have seen of that streaming revenue? I, you know, this just seems. Sketchy to me, to say the least. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It just it's just crazy to me that fifteen years ago, when the re- all the record labels were going belly up, all of a sudden they're making thirteen billion fucking dollars a year off of streaming. On what Spotify, YouTube, what like? Jesus Christ! It just seems like. You know, everyone was warning them to catch up with the technology when the computer thing started, and they didn't listen. And now it's like they're trying to catch up with the market, and by doing that, 
you know, who knows? Maybe they still had a fuck ton of money and they just bought Spotify or something like that. I don't fucking know. But it just seems crazy to me. I don't know. But at the same time, I do like that you sure as fuck don't need a major label or a full studio to make a great album anymore. Like, that's a good thing. Um, if not for that, I wouldn't be able to do this podcast. You know, if fucking all this equipment, you know, wasn't as cheap as it is. Not that it's, you know, bad, but not as, as inexpensive as it is. You know what I mean? So... I just thought that was crazy. I read that article and it fucking, I don't know, blew my fucking mind. So, all right. On to the next. Um, Let's see what we got here. Uh, So, one thing, uh, uh, another, uh, so like I said, I watched that 2000s documentary. And they were talking about, I watched the television one. The first two episodes is a two-parter on television in the early 2000s. And, well, obviously one of the big shows they talk about throughout is The Sopranos. Because of the cultural impact that that show had. Uh, for, For one of the first times people realized that TV could be as good as the movies. Um, and Tony Soprano was one of the first, uh, he, he, he was one of the first archetypes for the anti-hero, which is my, you know, probably my favorite kind of character. Batman. It, it, not entirely. Well, no, I, I guess Ben ends on Punisher, uh, Deadpool, um, Dexter, Jax Teller, uh, uh, Heisenberg, Walt from Breaking Bad. These are all anti heroes. Like, from anyone else in the story, okay? Like, like we, the us as the audience is on the side of Dexter, Tony Soprano, Jax Teller, the Punisher. We're on their side. To us, they're the good guys. They are the hero of the story. But think about it from the perspective of anyone else they interact with within the story. From almost anyone else's perspective, they end up the villain. And that's kind of what an anti-hero does. He does what non-heroic things for a heroic cause. Uh, And Tony Soprano was the archetype. Without him, we don't get to Heisenberg um, in a lot of ways. And uh, Dexter. So, uh, you know, if you've never, if you like those kind of shows, you never sat down and watched The Sopranos, I will say, you know, it's it's the acting and writing that carries it, not the action. So, you know, if you just want the action, then you're not going to be very happy. But if 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 you appreciate the writing and the acting, then you're going to be blown the fuck away because it's really incredible. <clears throat> and also watch that fucking documentary on Netflix; it's really great. Um, also, pretty excited. Sorry, let me, uh, and any of you who follow us on Instagram know that we just got a new ceremonial pipe here for the crypt. The Black Dahlia Murder Nightbringers Steamroller Pipe by Chameleon Glass. Should have started the show like this. Fantastic. And I, for the record, as you all know, well, maybe not, but Preston and I worked together in a uh, glass shop. Closed last year, sadly, but uh, so we're something of connoisseurs. We know 
a glass, and I gotta say, Chameleon Glass, they did a good job with this one. It's thick. It's uh, nice and sturdy. It's got good dimensions on it. Good size bowl. Very good. Really happy with it. Found it on Blasphemes Facebook group for uh, anyone who wants. Uh, if you're if you're a Black Dahlia Murder fan and you're not a member of the Blasphemes Facebook group, get the fuck on that because you're gonna love it. <laughs> <coughs> Trust me. Trust me. Um. So yeah. So I am excited about. Uh, what do we got? Friday, I think. Right. March eighth. Yeah, Friday, March 8th, we finally get a fucking Marvel movie. God damn it. Captain fucking Marvel finally comes out. It's the first Marvel movie since uh, Infinity War. I think, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And god damn it, you know... Because here's the thing. Like, people forget. Before these Marvel movies came out, movie theaters were closing across the country. Like, people thought Netflix was the end of movie theaters. Redbox. Back when it was Redbox, it was the end of movie theaters. Like, people forget that that recession we had back in 08. Nobody was going out. Nobody was going out to dinner. Restaurants were closing. Nobody was going to the movies. Those were, theaters are closing. Um, nobody was going to concerts. You know, <clears throat> it, that was all very real. And uh, places were closing down because of it. And then these kind of started to pick up a little bit, along with these Marvel movies coming out. And you know, people wanted to go to the theater to see a fucking show. And that's what these Marvel movies provide. Uh. I think I don't I think the only movie I've seen is Aquaman since I mean no, I've seen a couple movies. What were they? I don't remember. I've seen a couple movies since Endgame, but not many. Uh, sorry, Infinity War, but not many. Uh But yeah, I'm just the, I'm I'm I don't know. I'm just excited to uh be back in the theater, be back in that world. Uh it's it you know there's we're we're gonna get a whole lot of information about um everything you know what I mean this movie is gonna be it critical a critical chess piece in the uh, on the board for sure so I'm just excited for it I'm looking forward to it and uh, yeah so Captain Marvel Friday let's see uh, okay so you know what I'm gonna skip that let's just uh. Jump in to uh, the meat of what we got going on here tonight. Uh, I want to talk about the new solo album, the solo debut album from a Mr. Mark Morton of Lamb of God. Uh, the guitarist for Lamb of God released on Friday his first solo album called Anesthetic. And, uh, you know, we've been we've been talking about it for a while now, especially with the release of the first single um the truth is dead with uh Alyssa Wegluz and Randy Blythe uh and also the other single cross off with Chester Bennington uh both very 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 fucking good uh yeah i just i i i so i i had pre-ordered mine from newberrycomics.com because it came with a, a signed booklet from Mark Morton um, and it arrived today, which is Monday, um, the 4th. Uh, so I listened to it earlier, um, and I would like to talk about it. Now, I'd like to start off by saying, off the bat, Cross Off and The Truth Is Dead, right, sitting here right now, having given it one spin, still my favorite songs. Those two songs, I think, are fantastic. Uh, you know, any... Any album that has Randy Blythe on one song 
the song with Randy Blythe is gonna be my favorite. Like I, Randy Blythe is my favorite. Like dirty vocalist style um like i said before that's what we're anyone who isn't clean vocal dirty vocal we can we can make distinctions within that fine but let's be real we're talking about clean vocalists we're talking about axel rose and bruce dickinson like we gotta have a word for the 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 umbrella word for the growling and the screaming and all that dirty there's clean and there's dirty that's what we're calling it here on Lost in the Dark, at least. So, uh, Randy Blythe is my favorite of that style. So, you know, anything he does. And then Elisa White Gloves, you know, um, she's up there. Like, she's really fucking good. I, I like her cleans and dirties a lot, but I like, um, Angela Gasau more. I think she has more of like a in, in her dirties at least she has like a, a more veracity to it. Like like a more like repentlessness, relentlessness. I don't know. Like like a like a like a, like a viper like coming in and biting like your shoulder like over the top. You know what? It's coming in from the top. You know what I mean? Like I don't know. There's like a bite to it. Uh, ravenous, you know what I mean? Like, that I fucking ferociousness to it that I fucking love. Uh, but, uh, but to hear Randy and Elisa together, uh, and there's actually even a point, they both sing clean in the song, but they also both sing dirty. And there's a point in the song where Randy starts doing, ah, rah, rah, does his thing, and then she comes in, uh, on the dirty style vocals and, it's awesome. It's fucking awesome. So fucking awesome. Uh, I love hearing stuff like that. I love that. I love it when Des and Randy do it. I love when Elisa and Randy do it. I know Randy seems to be the one doing it a lot. With other artists, at least. Um, fucking, uh, so yeah, the, the, that song... Probably my favorite. And then uh, Cross Off. I mean, it's Chester. You know, it's Chester Bennington. And it's Chester Bennington sounding heavier than he's ever sounded, pretty much. And it's fucking fantastic. I'm sure you've heard it by now. I don't listen to the radio, but if that song's not huge on the radio, I don't know what the fuck to tell you, because it's outstanding. In terms of guitar work, uh, two songs that really stood out to me were Blur and Axis. Um, both of them uh, were really unique. Let me see. Um, Axis is almost a country song, but by that I mean like out, out, outlaw country. Like not my dog was dead country. Like fucking, fucking old outlaw. Like it's really, really good. Really like almost like somber, eerie sounding. Uh, really good though. I really enjoyed it. Uh, Sworn Apart. I'm not a big fan of the like. See, that's the thing about this album is I'm not a giant fan of a lot of the, some at least of the guest vocalists. You know, I because I'm I, and I'm going into this comparing it to metal, and that's my fault. I shouldn't do that. It's not a metal album. It has a couple of metal songs on it, but it's not a metal album uh, by any stretch. There's of so much, ver- there's there's so many the, uh, there's a large variety of styles of song on this album, uh, especially, yeah, like, so we go from like okay, so we got cross off and the truth is dead. Cross off with Chester. Truth is dead with Randy and Lisa, and then. We get the never uh, Chuck Billy from Testament. And it's just pure fucking face hitting straight metal. Like it's fucking great. Love the riff on that song. It's a fucking great song. Sworn Apart has a great riff. Not a huge fan of the vocal style. But it is good. Now back from the dead. The riffs are very very Lamb of Godish. Like, but more like hooky than Lamb of God would do. 
Sounds like Lamb of God if they were doing something crazy hooky. And then Josh Todd is the, the guest vocalist on that that album or that song from Buck Cherry. And, you know, he's besides the chorus, it definitely sounded like he gave it a little bit more grit than he normally does. So I did definitely like that. And I've never really minded Buck Cherry and that guy's voice, to be completely honest. Um and then one of the cra- and then back to the diversity of the album. Uh reveal like this is a I, I don't know how to describe this song. So first of all it's a female vocalist. So and she's not using dirty vocals. She's using clean vocals, but she's but it's also not or like rock. Like Okay, it's, it's, imagine, like, the kind of a song you might hear in, like, an old, dark-lit, smoke-filled bar that's got a lot of, like, mobsters and suits and fedoras, you know, maybe some, like, blue and purple lights going and fucking everyone's got a drink on the rocks, and there's a girl beautiful girl in a beautiful dress up on stage singing with like a rock you know rock band behind her mix that with like a crescendo of semi heavy light rock and you might get some idea of the song it's like i want to say jazzy but that's just that's not that wouldn't describe the music I don't know, it's weird. It's very strange. Like, I, I know how to describe it, but I don't know the words. You know what I mean? Listen to it. It's really fucking good, though. Like, let it stand on its own. Don't, okay. If I'm going to tell you two huge things about this album. Number one, don't go into it expecting a metal album. Do not. You will be disappointed. However, you will find some great metal gems on it. And number two... The guitar work throughout is fucking f- amazing. Like, amazing. And, you know, if I had to describe it, if I had to put it somewhere, if I had to give you an idea of what maybe to expect, I would say it's, like, the guitar work itself, in terms of the sound and stuff like that, it felt, to me... Very, like, Slash-esque. Like, it, f- it felt slashy. Like, Slash. Um, which, by no stretch of the imagination, is a bad thing at all. Uh, I thought it was really fucking good. It was... Uh, you know, I'm not saying it sounded like Slash. But, kinda. You know what I mean? It reminded me of that, sort of. And when you listen to it, you might hear what I'm saying. Um... Uh, but yeah, it was a really, really fucking good album. Uh, if I had to give it a rating, I'd say out of five goat heads here on Lost in the Dark, I'd give it a solid three. I'd give it a solid three just because I wanted more heavy and I didn't get it. But at the same time, that doesn't mean it doesn't stand on its own as really great music. Uh, definitely worth a purchase. So definitely support Mark Morton. Uh, pick up a copy of his new album, Anesthetic, came out last Friday. Uh, you're going to hear a variety of really great music. Uh, that's what I'm going to tell you. So, lots of great songs on it, too. And incredible ass guitar work. And, you know, uh, it almost makes you want to hear him do an album with no vocals at all. Like, let me just hear your guitar throughout. Like, there were a couple songs, honestly. There were a couple fucking songs where I, w- I was just like, shut up. I want to hear the solo that's going on behind you right now. Like, you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, it was, it's, it's a good fucking album and I definitely recommend it. So check out Mark Morton's anesthetic, uh, in terms of, uh, coming next in the future. Guess what? Guess what? Friday, same day that Captain Marvel comes out. We also get a release from the gods themselves, the bastards, Children of Bodom cannot fucking wait. Children of Bodom hexed comes out Friday. Um, I'm not sure. I, I again pre-ordered because of uh, something that you get with the pre-order that I will reveal when I get it. And those of you that pre-ordered probably know what it is. Uh, but 
that will be shipped the day before the release. So I doubt it gets here, which is a Thursday, so I doubt it gets here till the week from today, Monday. So I'll probably be doing another one of these next Monday talking about that album, uh, which I'm very excited for. Those three singles that have come off that so far, I have fucking loved um, and cannot, absolutely cannot wait to hear the rest of the album and uh, see them. Literally, the album comes out Friday. I probably won't get it till Monday. And then the following Monday after that, the 18th, they're in Detroit, and uh, Anna and I will be down there uh, watching them play at St. Andrew's Hall. Very excited. So um, it's going to be a Children of Bodom fest up here, motherfuckers. Uh, very excited for all of it. Um, but honestly, yeah, that's uh, that's about all I got for you. That's about all I got for you tonight. Um it's Monday, motherfuckers. Uh, you'll be hearing this at least by Tuesday. So uh, I hope you had a great weekend. Uh, and I'll be uh, hopefully getting a couple more episodes out to you this week. I hope you all have a great fucking week, though. Uh, remember to murder this shit. And uh, one second. Sorry. New setup. I, uh, I fucking... Uh, so here's a little story before I go. Here's a little story. Um, it was a little slow last week. We got the one episode out with Preston. Full disclosure. Reason why it was a little slower than normal. I had a little basement flooding action going on. And considering that is where the studio is located. Um, yeah. But luckily, it wasn't flooding, flooding. It was just, like, everything down here is carpeted, and uh, the some of the carpeting got wet, but it, that really wasn't, that was it. Um, the only thing that got really damaged was one dresser with nothing in it, so uh, not that big of a deal. Uh, but we did have to get all of that taken care of and cleaned up so it wasn't going to mold over and everything, so we could uh, continue to uh, have a nice space for the studio. In that process, however, I took it upon myself to go ahead and finish all the tweaks to this particular studio that I wanted to do for now. This is, uh, the crypt is ever changing, everyone. Uh, those of you that have been following us on Instagram, you can go back to our first few posts and see the first few iterations of the crypts, the Flint crypt and the Lansing crypt. Um,. And uh, what the Lansing Crypt has become, I will be posting it tomorrow along with the announcement of this very episode. So hopefully some of you can hop on our social media and see it. But uh, it has come a long way. It has come a long way. And uh, it will be ever-changing and it will get bigger someday. So soon. So uh, even this is certainly far from permanent. But for now, it is uh, very uh, come quite far and uh very happy with it so yeah it's uh getting getting used to this new setup and where all the new controls are and everything a little bit is what we're doing um and also it's kind of, full disclosure that's also kind of what i'm doing with this episode I mean, this is the first one i'm doing in the new setup to see how it feels and everything and i gotta tell you better than ever so uh very excited uh so yeah Honestly, that's about it for me. Um, oh, one one final detail. One final thing that I keep forgetting to talk about. We hit 50, everyone. We hit 50 fucking episodes, and I cannot believe it. Um, quite frankly, you know, we got, uh, we got like 50-some-odd subscribers on YouTube. Uh, I love you all. Um, all of our followers, anyone who pays attention to us in any way, shape, or form, I absolutely adore you. You're fantastic. Thank you so much. Uh, we've hit 50 episodes. I think, as of recording this, I think this is 53. Um, I keep forgetting to bring it up, but thank you so much for getting us to 50 episodes. Uh, this is, this is uh, you know, this is literally just a pipe dream for us. This is... Us just wanting to uh, get out there a little bit, and uh, you know, it, we we saw a vacuum somewhat for for uh, heavy metal podcasts, and uh, we wanted to be a part of filling that vacuum. So, anyone out there who's been paying attention to us at all, we thank you so much. We love you, uh, and uh, we're gonna hit. You know, we'll hit a hundred soon. So, uh, 
This 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 fucking train ain't stopping. I'll tell you that right now, motherfuckers. This fucking train ain't stopping. And I hope your fucking train doesn't stop either. Uh, I hope you fucking get fired the fuck up. Turn on your fucking death metal and uh, get moving through this week. And uh, dominate. Dominate. Stay metal, my friends. Stay metal. That's it for me tonight. Uh, I'll be back sometime this week. Hopefully with Aaron. We shall see. Um, But in any case, I will be back later this week to talk to you again. And uh, yeah, stay metal, my friends. Good night.